I decided to put my hair in a bun to feel a bit more sophisticated. But now I just look like I have horns. And I also look like an egg front on, so I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, if you are struggling at medical school, especially in your pre-clinical years where you're doing lectures and stuff, this video is for you because I'm giving you advice that I didn't really use until very, very last minute and I wish I did from the very first day of medical school. So if you're lost, this is the video for you. So make sure to like, comment and subscribe. <laughs> We're sorry, the number you have dialed is not in service at this time. So I'm going to like slightly shimmy to the side and then present my findings here. Okay, no jokes. Tip number one is to follow your intended learning outcomes or your learning objectives. In all honesty, I didn't really understand what uh, intended learning outcome was, what a learning objective was. I was like, oh, they're there. And I only realised in my second semester of medical school how important it was and how useful it was. I was just a lost puppy the whole of first year, I think, and second year, I don't really know. So the whole purpose of these intended learning outcomes is to test yourself. They write these out because these are objectives that you as a medical student are supposed to know in your specific university. And with Leicester, you either had them in the workbook or at the, in the lecture as well. And so you can use this to supplement your learning. In addition, it also ensures that you know exactly what you need to know and the things that you don't really need to know. Like, you know, who created this specific type of DNA replication. You don't need to know that if it's not in your intended learning outcomes. It's a bit like your specification that you probably used to use at A-levels. It's basically the same thing. The most important thing with intended learning outcomes is that you can also use this to test yourself. So, for example, the intended learning outcome could be describe the components of a cell. If you don't know how to do that, then you need to go back and revise it. And if you know how to do that, you can tick that off and you can move on to the next thing. Tip number two is engage in group-based learning. This is applicable to everyone of all knowledge and all levels as well. Because sometimes there might be one person in your group who knows everything, and you might be the person, this is me by the way, who didn't really know what was going on and was always a little bit lost. Even if you are struggling, use the person who does know a lot about that topic to aid your learning so you can gain something. Instead of sitting back, I'm telling you I did this quite a lot, sitting back and then being like, I literally don't know what's going on and I'm just not going to participate because there's no point, I need to go home and revise it. You might as well use the time that you've been allocated to try and learn something and learning something is definitely better than learning nothing. So engage don't be afraid tip number three is to use the models and cadavers to guide your anatomy learning as well because this will be like a hands-on way of learning um, your anatomy especially if you want to do stuff like surgery and stuff actually you need to know your anatomy for basically the whole of medicine I don't know why I'm acting like you don't need to know it but it's so so important and if you engage in your group um, based sessions so in Leicester it's called Belbin groups I don't know why but um, you can use that to test yourself in different parts of the anatomy and use the models to gain a better understanding of whatever topic that you're learning <clears throat> tip number four is to test yourself I did not do this enough, which caused me to actually fail some of my exams, which is completely normal at medical school because you can fail exams and still, you know, recover, it's fine. In the topics that I did test myself on, like more frequently than others, I did really, really well in them. But you need to test yourself on everything and anything you can. And that's so, so important to make sure that in the long run, you are ready for your exams. So you can do this in a variety of different ways. You can either use flashcards, do the quizzes that the university have set you, and make sure you do these quizzes at the time. Don't save it for your exam time. And you can also use other resources that you might have to pay for, such as QuesMed, which I haven't used yet, and Past Medicine. So for people who are doing preclinical medicine, so like in years one or two or three, it depends where you are, what you can do is you can subscribe to the free version, which is years one to three, and that can test you on anatomy and just basic clinical reasoning to move you forward to the next part of medical school, which is like all the clinical stuff. So the reason why you need to test yourself is just to help solidify your knowledge. Without testing yourself or quizzing yourself, you're not going to know what you do know. You won't know what you don't know as well. So it's very, very important to do that. And what I try to do now, um, as I've matured in my learning, but I test myself for 30 to 60 minutes using my flashcards on previous stuff that I've learned or made notes on so that I know um, that I'm keeping on track of those topics. It sounds a bit like a long-winded thing to do, but I promise you can literally, I've got my laptop here, 
You can literally just sit in bed like this and then you can revise and it's such a easy way of just testing yourself. Um, so if I've probably said the word testing so many times, but make sure you test, test, test because it's so, so important. In summary, use your learning objectives, participate in group-based learning, even if you don't know what's going on, use models and cadavers to help with your anatomy learning as well, and test yourself, which can be done in a variety of different ways, which I've outlined. So very, very short video. I'm hoping that it captures a very, very important part of learning at medical school, which is testing and just engaging. Medicine's really hands-on, so that you might as well get used to learning like that right now. There's probably a few things that I've missed out or some things that you might want me to cover, such as, for example, how I revise. And if you aren't interested in that, then please comment down below. Please subscribe and please like this video as well. I think I did that in a weird order. But if you have any questions, please let message me and all that stuff. Um, and I'll see you in the next video.